Hello everyone, what's up? It is Tria here, of course, from GG Gaming. I know that still sounds kind of weird, but either way, I'm going to be showing you guys the second episode of the tutorial. Um, when we left off, or to Redstone tutorial, when we left off, um, I showed you guys the zeros and ones to advance redstoning. I showed you condition branches, uh, inverters, and I showed you memory units. Let me get a drink. One second. <sighs> okay, now that I got a drink. Um... <coughs> <coughs> I'm going to show you guys how to put that knowledge to the test. So, if you can make this machine that I'm about to show you, then you can say that you successfully know how to make those three things. You know how to make a memory unit, you know how to make an inverter, which is extremely simple, and you know how to make a um, memory unit. So, I'm going to show you the machine that I designed over here. This is a combination lock. <coughs> so, what this combination lock says is that if your tool bag, and if you try to pull all levers down, this door is not going to open even if you click the confirmation switch, which is, are you sure? Which I need to reset that now, because I haven't set up a system to do that yet. Do that. But I need to see that. So, let's say you're not a douchebag, and you found the code for this mysterious door that you want to open. Um, the code just so happens to be 6, 3, and 1. <coughs> God dang it. That's one stuck in my throat. <coughs> There we go. I, as I was saying, some guy is really smart and he found the code in a chest or in a book that you can write in it, and the code says 6, 3, and 1. He pulls them down and he clicks the Are You Sure button. That opens the door up, which is perfect. That's just what we wanted to happen. So now we can go in, and then if we want to close the door, we can click this button. Now, of course, you want to open the door. You can open the button by opening the... Wait, that's the bag one. You can open the door by clicking the button. Pretty simple. Um... So yeah, I mean, you can see what heck's going on here. Um, so, instead of recreating the machine, I think I'm just going to explain to you guys what's going on here. Um, <coughs> so when you set up the machine, you just want to set up the interface like this. So you got to get the signs with the numbers on it um, up to 6. And then you want to have... Um, just set it up the same way as you see it here. I'll back up for a second and let you guys see it. If you want to set up. So just set it up like that. Okay, help, just wait, okay, alright, and I'm gonna go ahead and look at the button now. So make sure you put a button there, because you can't see it because of the stone texture. Um, <coughs> so just set it up like that. <coughs> God dang, I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, you need to put blocks, and then you need to put a sign on each side that you want to have um, power come from. It's just to make it easier, so in my case, I picked uh, 1, 3, and 6, so I put a sign at 1 with an exclamation point, then at 3, and then at 6. So I can know that's the one I need to have powered. So then I had it say, um, so basically you just pull down the levers you want. Six, three, and one. And for each one of those, you put a uh, redstone up here, and you have a torch there. Um, basically it just turns it off, and it allows it to say, because these ones are up, the ones that you don't pull down are powered correctly, it just makes it to where you, when you push the button, it works. Um, I'll show you guys how to do it, I guess. Um, so let's go see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I need to make this 15 blocks long. Let's go off in the sunset. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. One block there. There. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One lamb. A lamb? That's a word. That is a word, right? I think it is. All right, whatever. Um, make this go up by one more. Go ahead and put my exclamation point. So I'm just setting this up. This is just to keep it a little organized so you can easily figure out what you need to do. Um, it's just going to help you out in the long run, honestly. Um, so let's go name these. Let's put levers on them and everything. So like that. We're going to go set up a door. Put a door right there. Actually, yeah, we'll put a door right there, I guess. Actually, not that close. We want a little more room. Go. So a door like this. Boom. Now I got a door. Um, that's an exact replica of that. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So now we're just going to number these. One, two, a three, a four, and a five, and a six. Perfect. So now we've got the interface set up, or the UI, user interface, if you know what I'm saying. So what we need to do is we need to do this. Put blocks right here at the corners. Can you see what I did? There you go. Okay. So I'm going to just put um, redstone there, 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 and there. Now for every 
Um, for wherever you have the exclamation point, you put a torch down, a torch down, and a torch down. Now, the reasoning behind that is because we're going to have this, um, basically just come like this. Just bring out the power by, mm, I don't know, let's line it up with this one. How far does it go out? We'll make it go out by three, like that one. So, have the signals come out by three, like this. Actually, we'll wait on these ones. Don't do, only send out the signals by three for the torches. I need to set it to daytime, as usual. One, two, three. One, two, three. So what we're doing now is we're basically going to have it say, shut up, sheep. We're basically going to have it say, if you have one pulled down, and three pulled down, and six pulled down, then this door is going to open. Um, so basically, we have, see how the torches get powered off when we did that? Mm hmm see that? That's, we're learning, we're using the condition branch right now from our previous tutorial. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to cap this off by putting your repeater there. Oh my god, sheep, if you don't shut up. I'm just going to put this here. We just want to make sure the signal can make it to where we're going to put our box at, or where we're going to put our, um, what's it called, condition L at. <laughs> yeah, kind of sounds funny. Um, so yeah, put this to the L. And, um, just have that there, because now what we're going to have is we're just going to hook this up. Derp it. God, derp it. There we go. We're going to hook this up to where it goes here. Have this one go here. And have this one go here. And we're going to need to make sure this one can make it, so we're going to put a new, another repeater there. Because that signal, I'm not entirely sure if that'll make it. I don't feel like counting and see if it's 15 blocks, because redstone travels 15 blocks from powered. That's a nice little tip to know. Um, so there. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to derp it and just have this go straight to the door. So now, as long as all three of these are pulled down, this door is going to open. Simple condition has been set up. It'll work for every one of them. See? Pretty simple stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to show you guys now is what we need to do is we need to set it to where <coughs> these ones have to be off in order for this to work. So, pretty simple, actually. We just drag this out. Hook it up, drag it out, hook it up, drag it out, and hook it up. Pretty simple. Um, now we're going to add in repeaters too to every one of these, so just like this. Just line it up like the other ones. Just because we want to make sure the power can actually make it, because we're not entirely sure if it'll make that distance, so just to be safe. I mean, later on you could test everything and make sure you can make everything compact and whatnot. So now, if one of these other ones is pulled down, that door is going to close because this this lever is not one of the levers we need pulled down. So all you need to know is that that's what it does. And that's what it does. So if you pull it, this will get powered on, which will power this on, which this will turn this torch off, which if that torch is off, this door is closed. You can see what I did there. I hope. Um, I'll just I'll just go and I'll just go over here and pull this lever. I'm gonna go sit here for one second and let you guys see what the machine looks like um, when this is. This is the working correctly state. This is what it looks like when the machine is, um, the, when the door is opened and the levers have been pulled down. So you can base your machine off of this if you want to, or make an exact replica so you can have a hands-on experience. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to get a drink there. Um, okay, so that's enough time looking at that. <coughs> now I'm going to show you how to, um, add in your memory unit. So, the memory unit basically, um, I basically added in on the other machine, if you could see there was a button down here. So, three, six, there's a button right here, and if you click the button, it would just confirm that you had the right code in. I mean, it's just kind of an aesthetic thing. If you want to have it, you can. If you don't want to, then you're done with the tutorial right now. Um, but I'm going to show you guys how to put the button on it, just because it's kind of a little nifty feature. Um, so we're just going to make it say, are you sure, question mark. So when you click this button, you're just confirming that you have the correct code in, and so when you click it, it should power, you know, off. Um, <coughs> I'll show you the idea behind it. So, we need to set this up. So have it go like this. So when you click this button, we need the, this is where the inverter comes in, I guess. Put this down. By default, the door is going to be closed. Even though you have the code in, you need to confirm that this is the code that you want. So when you click the button, the door is only going to open up for a split second because it's not on a memory unit. So the button doesn't know how to act as a lever just yet. So let's go ahead and teach it. <coughs> I'm just trying to think if we have enough space here for this too as well. Um, 
we might have enough. I'm not sure. I don't think so. So we're going to have to move this like this. I'm just going to basically have the signal go to the block, which will power the door. Same thing. Um, we should have enough space now. So, I really hope we have enough space, because that's going to be pretty bad if we don't. Oh, yeah, we do. Okay. Wait. No, we don't. Um, yeah, so the memory unit takes up a little bit of space. We'll just rewire it to this side. There we go. <coughs> which will give us plenty of space to utilize. Um, like that. That should keep it powered. Yes, we got enough power. Good. Now we've got enough space for the memory unit. Um, let's just go and throw it in there. So I want to have this one powered on because this is going to send power to keep the door closed by default. So we're just going to make it go here to power this one off. And then there's our memory unit. You can see it already. Um, so now we just need to have a reset switch, which we're going to put right there. Because when we click this button, I'm just going to delete that. When we click the button, it's going to open the door because we put the correct code in. And since the correct code was put in, um, the door's going to be locked, so now when you want to go out, you can click this button, and it'll shut the door for you. Um, now, I mean, obviously this is a bad example, because this button would have to be on the other side, so you'd have to extend out your memory unit, or you could hook um, you could hook a, a, a button from the outside, and just have redstone go to this side. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just an example, really. <coughs> so don't think this is how the machine entirely works, because this is how the design is, but you have to move everything around. So let's see, if we put in the wrong code, what's going to happen when we push the button? The door's not going to open because, though the door button was clicked and it's activated, um, we have to reset it. I mean, that is kind of a bug with it, too. You have to you have to set up another unit to fix it, but I'm not going to show you guys that because that take a little bit, a little bit more time. It's not going to open because one of these is still being powered. So, yeah, it just, it just doesn't work. So if we have that um, up, we click the button, the door's going to open. So yeah, that's how you make a one, two, three, four. That's how you make a six-bit. Um, that's how you make a six-bit combination lock um, with a confirmation switch. I guess if you want to say. Um, I mean, yeah. And pretty much we use everything in here except for an inverter. Um, I could slap an inverter in here if you want. Okay, watch. Ready and wait. Nope. Boom! Inverter. That's an inverter right there. Perfect example for an inverter. I mean, completely useless for the situation just because we convert power to unpowered to powered again, so it doesn't even matter. Um, <coughs> so yeah, that's pretty much what we need. Uh, so yeah, that's how you make a 6-bit um, six bit combination lock, and that's how you successfully bring it up to a button. Now keep in mind, you don't need to have the button. Um, I would actually prefer the way without the button, because, I mean... If you think about it, it kind of works better without the button because you, you'd have to learn a little more red sending before you could learn how to lock the signal. So, yeah. Um, so, that's how you make a 6-bit thingy-maboob for like the 50th time. Um, why is this door locked? I don't even know. Oh, wait. Let's just reset it. There we go. Oh, I think I... Oh, there we go. Okay, so yeah. That's working. Um, I just want to make sure. So yeah, that's... Uh, this is like the 30th time I said this, but this... Yeah, that's how you make a 6-bit, um, combination lock. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. As usual, please write and subscribe, and please, if you have any confusions, leave comments. I'll be glad to reply. Um, if you have any suggestions for the next video, please let me know, because we did the basics, and I showed you how to apply the basics to a simple machine, which in this case was a combination lock. Um, keep in mind, you can do as many bits as you want. You could have a 130,000 bit if you wanted, so you get that 130,000 numbers on here in each sign. It'd be infinite. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment. If you want me to show you guys how to make another machine, I can show you as well um, using these basics. And then if that machine requires some new machi machinery, then I'll let, I'll show you guys in the next video on how to make that machinery or that component. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. As usual, please rate and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later. Blah, 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 blah.